You are listening to the Savage Fincast, episode 115, More Vicious, More Circle. Chicago. A criminal mastermind called Overlord held our city in its terrifying grip. Ordinary cops were losing the battle against Overlord's super freaks and mutants. Then, a miracle happened. When I found him, he had no memory of his past. I helped him find an identity and a life. Now we have a fighting chance. Now we have the dragon. This is the Savage Fincast, the show that puts the funge in funch Q. My name is Jim Purcell. I'm Craig Olson. I'm Raven Perez. Uh, welcome to another episode of the Savage Fincast, the internet's only dedicated podcast to Savage Dragon and its creator, Eric Larson. Uh, we come to you again with a brand new episode. Uh, this time we're going to be talking about the latest issue of Ant, Ant number three. Um, so... What we got for news, guys, before we get into the episode? You know what they say? No news is good news, so I've got good news for you. Yeah. yeah it's it's <laughs> been it's been a bit quiet. Uh yeah. which tends to happen when uh Dragon is um delayed. Delayed. <laughs> delayed. Yeah. Uh we've been here before, but fortunately we've got a lot of emails uh to go through. So we will not be yeah. just dead air for 20 minutes. Impromptu. Impromptu news session. Uh, real quick, give me a sound bite. What's new with you guys? Uh, Since- there's a lot There's a lot going on. Well, first, I guess for the listeners, and it, it's been about a month, right, since our last FinCast. And we've been kind of slacking, but we have talked about it before, but we have got good reason. We're all pretty crazed in our life. Mm-hmm. Um. I just bought a new house and I'm fixing up my old house to sell. And so I've been really crazy and running around with two kids and trying to get that all behind me so we can start doing this regular regularly. Uh, So I apologize to the listeners, but you know, you got to bear with us. Yeah, Yeah, I go ahead. No, No, you go. Uh, you know, similarly, uh, just it's been a real uh, <laughs> crazy ass fucking ride. Uh, I took a little stab again at uh, being a full time comic artist. Didn't work, but that's okay. <laughs> you got to try. You, it's because you, you refuse to draw Batman. I know, dude. Listen, if I just would bite the bullet, just just sell I mean, out, man. I'd be it's the just next that Cap- easy. I'd be the next Capullo and everything. They mail you those arms in the mail. You just slide them over your real arms, and you just get those Capullo arms. And then you can draw Batman so good. But, yeah, I gave it a shot, uh, like, about five, six months of being unemployed (laughs) and and drawing comics. And then, of course, that turned into a super crazy, frantic job hunt. So Craig and Jim had to wait on me for a while while I got my shit in order for that. So, again, I apologize for well, what's keeping... what's going on with the old ravens dojo you're like starting a new direction right with arc yeah just starting back up uh i was i, I finished that 20 year story arc which ended a story i started in 1998 so that's sick <laughs> so now that we're done with that uh it's time I'm to start a new 20 year arc yeah the new arc starts now get in it you know be cool be the cool kid, show you, up. Well, you haven't been well, idle these last few months. You've been doing, working on your no. like, devil-powered witches thing, right? Oh, God. Yeah, so, which is super cool. So much, dude. There's been devil-powered witches. There's a bunch of side comics besides that. I'm trying to get... Next year's the 25th anniversary. So I'm trying to get every book I've ever made in print for the 25th anniversary. And there's a lot of work to do. Plus, I'm about to finish... Or I did finish while I... Oh, shit, I finished it. While I was on my... Uh, <laughs> Not really hiatus. I finished um, 
Terror Cube. <laughs> My new video game. So, oh, yeah, yeah, I got a I got a new video game coming this October. Uh, I'm starting a new issue this month and just a shit ton of other stuff. So, Dude, yeah, on top of that, all your subscribers like at a certain tier were all getting digital pinups, which was pretty great. You were pumping out a lot at a time. Like I did for I a did, while. I did 50. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I did 50 of them. So it was really no hiatus. It, it was a hiatus, <laughs> I guess, from the main strip in a way, but you were still working your ass off. Yeah, it was actually like a terrible – I made terrible mistakes. <laughs> and, and I, I tro- made terrible choices. <laughs> I made terrible choices, and I, I was like, yeah, what if I just threw everybody that was subscribed like a cool pit up? And like, you know, New Year hit, and I started counting. I was like, god damn, there's like 80. <laughs> Oh, I want to cry. But I no. told you I didn't need one. You're like, nope, I insist. I do insist because the thing is, is I appreciate the support. So I had to knock something out. But yeah, and it was, let me tell you, if you ever get a choice, don't do 80 pinups in like four months. <laughs> it's madness. Jim, well, how have you been? Um, pre- Pretty good. Uh, yeah. I don't have anything exciting in my life, such as you two may have mine's uh, all pretend so well it's, it's not <laughs> uh i don't know if i've i probably mentioned this my mother has been staying with me this winter and uh mm-hmm. as of next week she is going to go back to uh staying at her summer camp uh, for the summer so i'll have my home to myself again uh nice. i'm not yeah i'm not now really you can cuss yeah i can cuss <laughs> and i can be loud i can say the swears <laughs> Next uh, FinCast listeners, he's Jack off say, in my living room. <laughs> he's gonna say "bussy" every every thirty oh, words. I don't say "bussy." <laughs> you will, you will. He said "bussy" just then, and his mom's in the house. No, actually, she's not here this week. It's uh oh, whew. it's yeah. I was like, that's gonna be awkward. What's "bussy," son? And now Jim's not wearing pants. That's I'm really traumatized. True, actually, uh, not wearing pants. He said, I can jerk off in the living room again. And dear listeners, I've sat on that couch. Oh. <laughs> I'm traumatized severely. It's okay. It's got a washable cover. <laughs> Thank you. <Oof. laughs> oh, I uh, wish. But mostly, nice. mostly I've just been kind of like trying to learn how to draw. Has been No, my... you haven't. He's modest. Dear listener, he's not been trying. He's been succeeding. Because I'm going to give him some praise. He showed me some of his art, and I was like, whoa, are you serious? Like, damn, dude, you've come up a lot. Like, good job. Thank you, Raven. I mean it. I appreciate it. Well, you're, you're really, you're putting in the work. You're, he said, I'm drawing every day. And I was like, bro, that's, it's just like any fucking thing. Put in the work, you'll get the gains. You're getting the gains, dude. Getting the gains. Getting the gains. Uh. All right, should we jump into some letters? Let's do these letters. We've got a lot to get through. There's one more piece of news. Uh, a very important individual, I think, to all of us, uh, retired recently, and I just had to give him a shout-out. Uh, Triple H. Oh, you know? yes. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Let's get Jeez. on to the letters. <laughs> All right, let's start off with the first letter from Peter Cruz. He says, hey, guys, it was great to hear you guys back on the air recently for the newest FinCast. As always, it was a great one. Congratulations on your image endeavor. That's amazing and well-deserved. For you listeners who might not know, that's our uh, Super Freaks one-shot. I'll be supporting it, and I already told my LCS to pull me two copies of Super Freaks. Can't wait to see it. Uh, Issue 261 was a real kick-ass issue. So many great scenes from Malcolm deep-throating his hot dogs and Maxine trying to deep-throat his to Faco and Samurai tearing shit up. My boy Roughneck got it pretty bad. Oh, pretty bad. Hope he recoups (laughs) somehow. The tank bottom is a cool idea, uh, but it would be pretty hilarious if he just has no legs moving forward and apes around (laughs) his knuckles and somehow still manages to kick ass. (laughs) <laughs> Amy getting her shot her shot to the tongue was my favorite panel, though Billy Dragon getting uh, slapped by Roughneck was a close second. 
As far as of interesting conversations, man, 30 years already. Aside from the usual classics, I remember some more obscure image books that come to mind over the past 30 years uh, of image, uh, which include uh, the ones that he loves includes Mage, The Darkness, Gen 13, anything by Ed Brubaker, I Love Trouble, Luther Strode, and Battle Chasers, as well as most of the early cliffhanger era titles like Crimson and Out There, to name a few. As far as Ant number 12, I say, why the hell not? Though I could have gone with or without it, any extra Larson work is cool with me. So far, the first two issues of Ant are pretty dope. Looking forward to where the book is going. Well, thanks again for doing the FinCast and for listening to me babble. Until next time, fellas. Peter Cruz. What was he... So, remind me, guys. What is he talking about? The whole tank and apes around on his knuckles? (laughs) He's talking about Riffnick. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, he, he got his legs ate. He got his legs ate by by Faco, and then he got oh, his legs cooked. Right, and we were talking about... <laughs> All right. <laughs> like, it'd be cool if he had tank legs. <laughs> well, tank treads. Yeah, uh, like that, just that, ape, like that. I get it. Apes around his knuckles, like, just, like, using his knuckles to walk yeah. around. Do you guys remember how those, like, people with no legs used to have to, like, have the, the little box with wheels, and they just give them, like... Two little chunks of wood with handles on them to get around. <laughs> My God damn, can you imagine Roughneck on one of those? I got no legs. I got no legs. <laughs> Terrible. Do you remember that in Kids? <laughs> no. Do you, remember, you ever see Kids, the movie Kids? The movie I remember Kids. This. I don't know Kids. I forgot uh, it. They're on a subway, and there's a guy with no legs, and he's just <laughs> going around the subway saying, I got no legs. It's horrible. I'm, hor- I'm a horrible person. Sorry. You're quoting uh, media, so it's not true insensitivity. I'm laughing, though, so I'm still horrible. Oh, yeah, that's right. See you in hell. Hello, Finn comrades. <laughs> you like that transition? <laughs> See you in hell. <laughs> See you in hell. Hello, Finn comrades. I usually listen to the Finn cast while I'm out running and or walking, but today was the first time I was able to sit down and flip through the comic in question, Ant number 2, as you discussed it. I was pleased to see that I was not the only one who found the events in Ant to be confusing, Jim Purcell. I suspect, (laughs) I threw that in, I had to editorialize that moment. I suspect you three were able to make more sense of things because you're smarter than me, or perhaps you put together... (laughs) Absolutely not. (laughs) Or perhaps you put together some kind of audio-based media program that addresses comic books. In either case, I was able to make a little more sense of what may be going on in Ant. I did have the revelation while reading Ant issue 3 that things are supposed to be a bit confusing, and Hannah is confused. With you guys supporting that theory, I can happily read the series without trying to piece everything together. On the Shadowhawk topic, I will pick it up. I find that my taste in comics is becoming more and more narrow as time goes on, I am far more excited to see a comic Xeroxed by a local artist on the shelf than I am anything from Marvel or DC. Fuck yeah. The the Jim Rugg effect? Yeah, baby. Thus, I find my pool list has been slowly shrinking. I'm happy to see a title to add to that list, even if it's a short series. And we need to support our local comic book store. Uh, I see this as an opportunity to make them a few more cents. Also, I do hold the opinion that Shadowhawk has one of the better designs of early image characters. Ooh, debatable. Um, However, you are 100% correct. Malcolm should have been on that cover. The thing about Dragon Family is that they are very visually recognizable. No one's going to see Malcolm or any of the kids or Billy or Paul and think, wow, what is that guy supposed to be? Having Malcolm on the cover, arms wreathed in electricity, would definitely have the potential to make a potential reader think, whoa, what happened to Dragon? As to why no one wrote in considering which lettering team, I don't think the average reader pays that much attention to lettering unless it's bad. It's sad, but true. Eliopolis will always be the king because he drew me some sweet, sweet artwork back in the day. Oh, and he's good at writing words and such. Crack a frack of doom being the best one. Finally, <laughs> thanks for the shout out concerning my letters page contribution. I've been digitally hanging out with the amazing artists of the Larson fandom for quite a long time. A 
I've always been the low man on the talent ladder, not putting myself down here, just lifting them up. And really, I didn't have the confidence to send anything in until recently. Having worked on a secret project, wink wink, recently really gave me a kick in the butt to start drawing every day. Keep up the quality work. I'm glad we have ant issues to keep us talking until the return of Dragon in June. And as I mentioned before, I consider the FinCast part of the entire Dragon Ant experience. It wouldn't be the same without you guys, Ken Albury. Aww. Feel good. That's Nothing sweet. but feel good. Yeah. Um, I just want to say thanks, Ken, for sending in that letters column art. We gave it praise on the last uh, FinCast, but if anybody, other Fin heads are listening, hey, man, feel free to send in a little like piece of art to include in the letters column. I love it. I love it. It doesn't always have to be a huge you know, pin up, like you don't have to shoot for the back of the book. Just throw a little like picture of ant in with your letter. And by the way, as I understand it, ant needs letters. So please write into ant, but, uh, just period. But like, if you do draw something, doesn't matter if your arts, good finger quotes, bad finger quotes, just fucking throw in some art, man. It's part of what made those old seven dragon issues. So awesome. And I think it can make, uh, New issues capture some of that magic. All right. I said my piece. <laughs> All right. Hey, fellas. It's been a bit since I last wrote in. I want to take a quick opportunity to thank you all again for having me contribute to Super Freaks. I'll be forever grateful and can't wait to see everyone's hard work in print. As for the interesting question this time, if Ant were to change art direction, I think I'd like to see Eric try the opposite of what he's doing now, where everything is drawn in one thinner line weight with fewer areas of solid black shading. Uh, wait. The opposite of what he's doing now, where everything is drawn in one thicker, thicker line weight with fewer areas... Oh no, this is... okay. Okay, he, he's that is describing, that, that, what's, describing happening what's happening now. And now he's going to say, yeah, yeah. it would be really interesting to see him play with heavy, high contrast inks akin to something like Sin City, maybe exclusively with a brush or a brush pen. Uh, Ant, to me, has a similar visual appeal to characters like Spawn, casting heavy shadows into the stark red costumes that make for a real striking visual. One of my criticisms of the original Ant run is that the coloring being really garish and overly airbrushed in spots. So seeing a simpler, punchier approach being taken is really effective, and I think would uh, it would nicely juxtapose dark, imposing, high-contrast brush strokes. Cool. Uh, and if you're still taking suggestions for conversation topics, do you think the current arc of Dragon should do away with the Vicious Circle for good, or do you think they should stick around for the duration of the series? Personally, I'd be interested to see a new, more permanent group or threat take precedence in Malcolm's life to further set the current era apart from the old. As always, keep up the great work. Uh, Connor Tierney. Tierney. Thanks for the letter, Connor. Uh, I think we're going to be using your interesting conversation topic as our interesting conversation later. Um, I think the high contrast idea has merit. Um, I know Eric's done high contrast before, and it always generally looks pretty good. Although I get the yeah. feeling the reason he's doing the style he is on Ant is to make the book come out faster. So I don't know if he wants to do something as labor intensive as that. But it would be interesting to see. And you're right, uh, Ant's kind of like chrome sheen looks great with all like the swirly blacks. Agreed. Totally agree. Sin City Ant would be fantastic. Um, shall, shall we move along? Move along. Hey guys, I just finished listening to episode 114. Here's some thoughts on some of the topics you touched on. It's distressing to learn about the delay of new issues of Savage Dragon, but it is what it is. Hopefully, Eric manages to get ahead and maintain a regular schedule. But if not, I'll take new issues whenever they come out. The publishing schedule has been erratic over the years, but new issues are always worth the wait. I've always been a fan of Jim Valentino's work, so I'm looking forward to the last Shadowhawk comic, although I'm disappointed he isn't drawing it himself. And I pick up the official image timeline he put out. It's a fun book, but as a longtime Image fan, there's very little in there I didn't already know. Like Raven, that sexy bastard reading this letter, I was hoping for some juicier details. 
NFTs are a terrible idea, and I hope Eric never creates any. Some other creators I enjoy have done some NFTs, and I did not support them. Nor would I if Eric made any. I hope you guys do some more retro podcasts during the hiatus. Last year, I managed to finally... We'll get it. There's a few months. Um, (laughs) Last year, (laughs) I managed to finally obtain every issue of Dragon and its spinoffs, so I am currently in the midst of a reread of them all in order to celebrate the 30th anniversary. So your retro episodes are really connecting with me right now. I'm glad we'll get to see some shows dedicated to Ant while Dragon is on hiatus. It's been an intriguing run so far. I'm not sure if I agree with Jim or Raven and Craig's interpretation. Uh, oh, I, read, I butchered the, <laughs> the the pacing on that. I'm not sure if I agree with Jim or Raven and Craig's interpretation of the story. Having just read issue three, the story's timeline is not becoming any clearer. Or perhaps it is. It still <laughs> feels open to different interpretations. I'm enjoying the comic. Much like Craig, I'd put these comics at six or seven. Uh, enjoyable comics, but not mind-blowing. As far as your Finnerest in conversation topic regarding what different art styles we'd want to see on Ant, I wouldn't mind seeing some other anchors over Larson particularly some really heavy-handed anchors or finishers, as it used to be called, since Eric's art's so open. I'm thinking of somebody like Jerry Ordway. His inking's strong and overpowering, but it looks good over Larson. I know they did a Freak Force cover or two together. Eric said he liked the way Ordway's inks uh, softened or rounded off his normally angular artwork, and it'd be a fun departure from the Savage Dragon art. Anyway, looking forward to the next show. Thanks for doing the podcast. Take care of yourselves. Jeremy King. Um, Ordway's yeah, great. Man. Yeah, Ordway would fucking rock. I'd love to see just, uh, you know, some wild inkers. Like, uh, what was it? What's the dude? We were just talking about Luther Strode. Man, that guy's fantastic. Who, who's that guy? I know we know his oh, name. Um... Well, let's, okay, let's say <laughs> Daniel Warren Johnson, you know, Murder Falcon. You know, Beta Ray Bill, Wonder Woman. Mm-hmm. You know, I'd love to see like a guest anchor approach, right? Trad Moore. Right. Trad Moore. Bring Trad Moore in. How would he look covering Larson? Just be mad as shit. So, yeah, I think that uh, anchor idea is pure money in the bank. And, uh, yeah, death to NFTs. Fuck apes. Mm-hmm. All right. <laughs> Keep going. All right. So... We get our next letter from MC Timmy. He says, hey, one guy, tit guy, and Craig. So I guess uh, my personality isn't reduced to a single item. What's one guy? One piece? Jim, why are, you one, why are you one guy? Well, I'm just, I assume I'm tit cause guy. Because I'm, I'm template guy. I'm create a character. <laughs> yeah. We all knew Raven was tit guy. <laughs> There's no like... <laughs> debating that it's hard i'm just craig i guess i have no uh cool trait you gotta start Uh, anyway (laughs) he says uh new fan of the show and honestly podcasting in general i'm seriously just barely opening the the vast pandora's box of people rambling about literally everything on the internet my all-time favorite thing to talk about think about and hear others talk about and think about is savage dragon and eric's work in general so therefore i am here for the party I'm, oh, I'm here to hear the party. <laughs> Anyways, to answer your interesting question, the coolest thing I could think of to do with Ant would be to do a flip over issue. Ant on one side, Dragon on the other, just for one issue. Then people could see how extremely different yet incredibly brilliant both of them are. Ant fans get an issue of Dragon. Dragon fans get to peep Ant out. Eric Larson fans only have to buy one issue. LOL. Bad sales pitch, I know. I'm not sure how I'd go about doing the trade dress. Would you do both sides of the same tra- with the same trade dress or alternating trade dresses? Like one side retro and the other modern, or both sides modern? MC Timmy. When he, when he it's said kind flip, of an interesting When idea. he said flip book, the first thing I thought of was, wait, he wants the comic to be upside down? <laughs> uh, <laughs> a flip over issue. Yeah, I guess just mm-hmm. half and half, right? Is that what he's saying? Half, yeah, yeah. One ha- side. half dragon. Wouldn't it be cool, though, if, like, the ant side, as the story goes on, 
it like meets up with the dragon side and like they, yes. they meet in the middle. I don't even know how you would actually structure that because it still has to kind of be a flip book. Yeah. Well, so, they could meet at the end and then the next issue would be the team up. <laughs> that's a good way to do it. Yeah. I don't see how other otherwise how you would do it. You know what? Can I just say that like Eric's itching for an experiment and yeah. that would be a great experiment. What if a flip book where both halves just kind of meet in the middle? Yeah. I can't imagine that I can't imagine that hasn't been done though. By who? Good question. I mean no one does flip books <laughs> really anymore. That's what I'm saying, is if it was done the last time it would have been done is like ages ago. Right. I say go for it. If you're listening, Eric, go for it. Apparently the reason he, he stated online the reason he doesn't do gatefold as an experiment is that gatefolds cost too much to make uh, to print them. It's kind of a pain in the ass. You know what? I'm going to rebut that and say just charge us more for that issue. I don't he's care. Also, he's also had issues in the past where like remember like I think Vanguard Fosco was drawing like covers for it and it, people like I guess comic shops would just may list them back, you know, with the Vanguard cover and it would be confusing. Yeah, so, they would they would file them as Vanguard in the wrong place. So uh, that could also be an issue if and people it, were looking for an ant or a savage dragon and they were flipped the wrong way. Yeah, I think he had to like he did two things. I think he unflipped the cover. He originally was doing flip books, but then he unflipped it and then he also put Savage Dragon Presents, I think, on top of it. The Vanguard Maybe, side. Right. I got. I got to pull out my issue and check. But he did something. Yeah, or he took off the Vanguard logo. That too. Just, yeah. Uh, Unfortunate. Gen- gentlemen, two words, one shot. Yeah. Sol- solves all your problems. Right. Doesn't fuck with regular numbering on Ant or Savage Dragon. Allows well, you to have a book that it's like if it's flipped, whatever. Who cares? It's a one shot. It'd probably be hard to coordinate, but I'd almost want it to be like a 48-page comic, and one half is an ant issue, and one half is a dragon issue, and it counts for both. Eric would do that. Like, it would be (laughs) ant number six, and it would be Savage Dragon uh, 200 or whatever. You ever notice how, like, all his experiments are usually, like, a nightmare? Like, they're usually a pain in the The ass. The only problem with that is that... Well, unless you, you'd have to oh, buy two, just, yeah. is that a problem? You just charge double because it's double sized, right? Yeah. yeah, that's why it's a one shot. People yeah. are used to paying more for a one shot. But I'm saying I'm it wouldn't be a one shot. It would just be the regular issue for both comics. It would just have to be double sized because if it was just a regular sized comic, he would lose the sale. Right. You know what I mean? But people would, who have collections would have to buy it twice to put it in both slots. <laughs> would they? <laughs> I know you're talking about me, aren't you? Are you talking yeah. about me? We're way past that, that point. You know collectors. <laughs> I, I wouldn't have to. <laughs> no, you wouldn't. Dr. Digital speaks. You paper plebeians. Dr. Digital doesn't buy double. <laughs> paper plebeians. <laughs> Although I, su- I suppose you could also have three different versions of it where one's an ant issue, one's a dragon issue, and one's a flip book issue. That's the double Capitalism issue. is running unchecked, baby. Have three versions. Yeah. So what? People, FOMO. People... What'd you call me? <laughs> FOMO sexual. Oh. Oh. All right. Let's let's get this last one read before we go completely off the rails. Uh, greetings, <laughs> Finheads. You on the plebeian. On the interesting conversation of the new art direction for Ant, I like uh, Jim's idea about the painted look. Would be pretty sweet. I would like to see a similar style to uh, Barry Windsor Smith. I think the crazy details, not only of the characters, but of the backgrounds as well, would look interesting to see. And to see Eric's take on it would be pretty damn awesome. Once again, thanks for the fin cast. Uh, James Big Jim Sheehan. Uh, I'm not super familiar with Barry Windsor Smith, unfortunately. I know what? he just... Well, it's it's one of those weird uh, things that just never sort of... Because I never read like the classic Weapon X story. And yeah. even I do own his monster graphic novel, but I haven't actually looked at it yet. No rune. What about oh, no. Conan? No. Was Neither he of on those. Conan. Conan. Uh, 
I think, he was, I think he was a Conan artist. Yeah. Like, I don't know. Yes. Uh, the I know Barbarian. He, I know he did a Machine Man miniseries, which I, I do have the single issues on, but I, again, have not read. Uh, it's just, just no confluence of events have gotten me to read any of his classic work, sadly. I promise you, you would like his art. Fantastic artist. Yep. Oh, I, I, oh, I, 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 I'm not deb- debating that. I, I know his name is associated with quality. For some reason, I would imagine you to be like collect like Rune or like Ultraverse comics or something. Oh yeah, that's very Jim. Yeah, that's very Jim. Wait, are you being serious? Because yes, I'm. It's yeah. a lot like I'm anti extreme '90s comics. I mean, I buy all no, the ultra, I buy the Rune's Ultraverse not comics. extreme. It's Rune extreme. reminds me of Cross Gen. That's where you're coming yeah, from. Right? Exactly. Huh. Yep. Well, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, I definitely see Rune comics in dollar bin, so maybe I will start grabbing them. I think you'd like him. He's an influence on Eric or vice versa or whatever. I think he's an influence on Eric, right? Isn't that how it I would not call Rune an extreme comic in any sense. Yeah. Just kind of associate all Ultraverse books in that era. You think I mean, so? I mean, I own some of them. I mean, I got Firearm and I got... Like, Prime was cool. It was like, uh, what's his name from Batman? Uh, Brave uh, Fogel. Yeah, I freaking love his art. You guys up. know a comic I bought just purely for the art was Valeria the She Bat. Valeria the She Bat. I don't know. I have that no one. idea what that is. I think it was Neil Adams. Yeah. Sexy Bat Woman. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay. It's not Rune, good. Rune be- was a weird comic because he's not an attractive character at all. He's so gross. Well, he's like a man thing sort of thing, right? He's like uh, uh, what's his name? That uh, what's his name? Just had the movie. Oh, uh, Morbius. Morbius, Michael, kinda. Michael, He's like Michael a vampire. Morbius, the living vampire. <laughs> Doctor Michael Morbius. Oh yeah, these Valeria covers I'm looking at. Yeah, I can see why uh, this appeals to you. They give you the tingles and the jingles, don't they? Uh, yes. She's got tits a, for tit pur- guy. Purple's a great <laughs> color. Yes. Yeah. She's got, but she's got. She's got she has actual big bat ears. Yeah, that's what's cool. Mm. She's got this wicked bat face, and then like the costume's cool, and like he does great layouts on every single page. It's just the comic sucks. It's just not, <laughs> that's it. That's all. It's just, just not a good sucks. comic, but the art's fantastic. <laughs> the character design's good too. As a dollar bin find, I recommend it. I think I, I've definitely seen some of these continuity comic issues. Around, you're gonna like it. You're gonna like it, listener. You too will like it, Craig. You're all gonna like it. Valeria the She Bat. This is the new. I'm not gonna this, like it. This is the Valeria She Bat cast. <laughs> I'm Raven Perez. <laughs> the show that Echo locates. I don't your, exist as I'm, a I, I'm host on this podcast. <laughs> this is Tid Guy with his friends One Guy and Craig. <laughs> Let's uh, echo locate some news, guys. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> All right. It's interesting conversation. <laughs> We're, We're going to go with Connor Tierney's, right? Suggestion? Yep. And uh, his suggestion was, uh, what do we think of the current... Ar- uh, do you think the current arc of Dragon should do away with the Vicious Circle for good? Or do you think they should stick around forever? Interesting question, because the Vicious Circle has always been around. Their mm-hmm. prominence has ebbed and flowed. I personally feel like the Vicious Circle has lost a lot of its uh, threat, I suppose. Oh, yeah. When it was first introduced, the Vicious Circle legitimately seemed dangerous because it was a freaking army of yep. villains. And it always, and, and ever since, well, really ever since Savage World, um, when it got pared down dramatically... It always it's always kind of felt more like uh, just not as threatening, and part of that yeah. is because Dragon came on the scene and he 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 basically uh, cleaned up the city as he was you know the whole reason he was recruited was to fight off these guys. Right. I I mean the vicious circle went from being, I mean the, the book went from being just in Chicago, and so that everything was vis- vicious circle. So every villain he fought was tied to the vicious circle. Mm-hmm. To opening up to a wider universe of characters, 
I think Dart, of course, revitalized the Vicious Circle as a threat. And mm-hmm. that was some of the best the Vicious Circle has ever been. But Dart's death, followed by everybody else getting locked up, like all their heavy hitters getting locked up, like uh, uh, Rogue Trooper, or Rogue Trooper, uh, uh, Rogue, Rogue Warrior, Warrior. yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think uh, I think they could stand with another revitalization. I think the name Vicious Circle works really well. Oh, it's great! It's great. It's a, name. It's a great name, but I think I think they they have to be a threat, and they can't just be a bunch of goofy f- villains who can't get their act together. I mean, they're dangerous in the sense that they kill. Like they're pretty they're pretty good at like uh, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, just just. Chaos, so in chaos. But I think what makes the vicious, what makes the vicious circle dangerous is that they need to be have a focus. They have to have a a yeah. a because when Antonio uh, Segetti there, you know, was crime boss of Chicago, maintaining his power was the goal. Yeah, and without that goal, the vicious circle just winds up being just another group of knuckleheads for Dragon or Malcolm to come beat up. To and me, th- the vicious. Go ahead, sorry. And I was just saying, Dart brought that back, where Dart was basically working to consolidate power and maintain her power, and that gave the Vicious Circle a goal. And once she's gone, it's back to where they were. With a bunch of rotating, rotating bosses and no goal. Well, to me, even with Dart in it, the Vicious Circle never felt as scary as the earlier issues of Dragon. I felt Dart did, but it was always Dart plus a bunch of throwaway characters yeah, or guys that you remember from the past that really haven't done much. To me, the vicious circle was great when it acted more like it was like the sinister six. Whereas you had guys like Mako and skull face and, you know, heavy hitters like that, which alone dragon had trouble with. And you could have a whole issue with like dragon versus Mako or dragon versus cutthroat. But then together, you had all these guys on the vicious circle, all these like fully formed villains, which was crazy, you know? And I felt like, I feel like vicious circle lost a lot when he just had a bunch of random kind of goofy looking guys or cool looking guys, but didn't have much background. You know, we lost the, the chaos and control or, or we didn't lose him, but he just, they never used, you know, just think about like the first 50 issues Every one of those guys in the vicious circle could probably star in their own issue of Savage Dragon or did, you know? Yeah. And then it just stopped happening, which is fine because he's got other things. You can't just fight, fight vicious circle goons for 200 issues. But the vicious circle took a big hit when he didn't develop those characters. And then we had like vicious circle junior guys, which were cool. But, you know, all the other guys, like if you look at all the vicious circle guys now, Unless they were developed in the first 50 issues, they really haven't been developed. They're just kind of visual guys. That's fair. It's it's interesting to me that probably the most um, extreme acts the Vicious Circle ever pulled off, the most, the most interesting thing the Vicious Circle ever did happened before the series started when they assassinated uh, uh, Billy Bearman. Super Patriot. And yeah. and crippled Super All Patriot, right. that that right out the gate made the Vicious Circle appear super dangerous because not only were they they villains committing crimes, uh, but they were actively killing superheroes, and I think right. maybe that's what current Vicious Circle is lacking is that they're not proactive enough. Like, what if they yeah. assassinated North Force? Or something, right. something like that, or crippled Captain Tootsie. They, they, they or killed the prime minister. They blackmailed Frank, or they thought they killed Frank. You know, like they were doing some heinous stuff. Like the whole th- the, re- the 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 cool thing about the vicious circle is that they are organized, and the vicious circle right. has not felt organized as much. Uh, well, they did under Dart because Dart again, Dart had goals and plans, and. It felt organized, but whenever it wasn't, whenever it wasn't 
uh, Overlord, Cyberface, or Dark, the Vicious Circle always just kind of feels spinning their wheels to me. I think yeah, um, I agree. kind of the thing you're both sort of uh, dancing around here is that, and we've talked about it before, is that uh, this book could really benefit from some arcs. And when you say give the Vicious Circle goals, uh, give them an arc. You yeah. know, give them a direction to push in, like a goal they're trying to accomplish that takes issues. And then, like, kind of like you were saying, Craig, like, you know, the old VC were so full of stars that, like, a single issue could be like, oh, my God, you know, Dragon fought Mako, this whole issue. But then you would see Skullface in the background, like Black Mel and Frank or whatever else. And in that way, they also had a giant overarching goal. And so they felt like a real presence. Yeah, they had like A list, B list, and C list guys, you know? Yep. And it was like, yep. like I said, that, that big thing for me was like any one of those A or B list characters could hold their own against Dragon. But then if you threw them in the vicious circle all together, it was like, it looked like a serious threat. To bring it back to Connor's question, I'm going to say I think the current arc should dissolve the vicious circle. But I do not think that the vicious circle concept should be thrown away. Because I think it's strong as hell. I just think the existing vicious circle can't match the intensity of the original like approach, like how they you know came in the original book's you know conception. But basically, just uh, I just think that like uh, you should. I, I think the vicious circle I, narratively it just seems like Eric's been pushing for him to just fall apart anyway. Yeah. And so if they're gonna fall apart, it would feel real natural. However. I'm saying, if you're going to do away with them, don't throw the baby out with the bathwater, man. Bring in a group of heavy fucking hitters with goals and plans that have, like Craig said, stars. You got, like, visually appealing, dangerous, like they fucking kill people, they kill superheroes, they have a big fucking goal they're trying to accomplish. Yeah, yeah. Like, my big Bring, worry, my quote-unquote big worry right now is, remember... The whole reason that Faco uh, tortured Roughneck was to find out where the Vicious Circle are. My worry is that he's trying to become the leader of the Vicious Circle. And does he seem like a leader material? Exactly. He, he just doesn't seem like the correct choice to me. So I, I think that's think, his goal. I think we need Gang War 2 and we need some yeah. new yeah. blood that are more vicious... And more hungry. More vicious, more guys. circle. Yes. <laughs> well, Malcolm, here's the thing. Is it like, it's all about pushing this book even more firmly into the Malcolm era. Like, you've still got Malcolm fighting guys that fought Dragon. Yeah. And, and it's like, hey, man, that's fine because we do love those old visuals. Like, I love Mako and I love uh, Roughneck and Dart, you know, and Samurai. They are all kick-ass visuals. But also, too, feel free to, you know. Give us Vicious I, Circle 2.0. I still want villains that were in Paul's universe that weren't necessarily villains and Malcolm's to gain those memories and become villains again. I would also accept that. And give us the new and improved Vicious Circle. That's what I want, but I never get what I want. <laughs> You can't always get what you want, Craig. Who uh, sings that? <laughs> <laughs> the Stones. Let's keep it that way. Oh! Wow. He got gotcha. you. <laughs> got what him. A dick. Wow. What a dick. Wow. What a dick. forget i ever said anything and also i'll just go fuck myself See ya. <laughs> got him <laughs> i think you need to be done away with for good i know damn well who sings that song <laughs> I'm i do i had to like think Mr. about it i'm like mr vinyl record music <laughs> man goes to a show every weekend doesn't know the stones get out of here i knew it was a setup i just wanted to set you up because i'm a good co-host I- i'm right, tick guy did. I'm tit guy, Craig. I'm tit guy. All right. One guy, you want to take us away? <laughs> yeah, I think it's time for that thing you say every time. 
Well, I'm hungry. It's been a long time. I'm goddamn starving, to be honest. And I think what's on the menu is meat and potatoes. Sounds good. I so, right. I was right. You were wrong. <laughs> Fuck all of you. <laughs> <laughs> what a dick. Is this a dick contest? What's going on with this fan cast? There's some saucy tape. You shut your mouth. All right. You were saying one guy? <laughs> so, ant number three. Familiar looking cover. Uh, it's one of those, what they, what you would call it, one second later or one minute later or one moment later sort of scenes. We, This is the cover, I believe, of a spawn issue, except for ant was on the wall. And mm-hmm. now she's leaping in action. <laughs> to fight the spider, I believe he's called. Spider King. Spider King. I just realized those two cracks in his freaking mask are eye holes. You just realized that? I, I never... I just thought, like, for some reason he had, like... Someone had shot him in the face, and there were just, like, bullet holes in his face. And that undoes all your smugness about knowing what happened last issue. And it shoot, he shoots water out of his eyes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I just I just always thought... I don't know, for whatever reason, they just did not register his, like, eyes to me. And I just thought he had, like, a blank face. Just that You literally thought those were bullet holes? Well, I thought they were just, like, battle damage. I'm going to join all the people who mock Fountainhead. I feel so Shame. smart. I feel so smart compared to you. <sighs> <laughs> like, 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 like Spawn had cracked him in the face with his spiked wrists. I don't Perfectly. Know. It's two eye holes. Mm-hmm. Hey, just... man. It's fine. I think he's a cool visual. Somebody was like, well, it just looks like Doomsday and Venom mixed together. And I'm like, you fucking... Stupid? No, it doesn't. <laughs> everything yeah, looks like everything mixed together. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. We're dealing with like, 80 years of comics. So. Sp- Sp- you, Spawn looks like Venom and Spider-Man mixed together. <laughs> Only that one's a legitimate claim. And, and, and the cape of Mr. Bones. <laughs> Mr. Bones. Real character created by With Sp- Punisher skulls. I thought you were going to say Doctor Strange and you said Mr. Bones. <laughs> Oh, Raven, you're not familiar with Mr. Bones? Mr. Is Bones. A video game character? I don't know him. Well, yes, there is a Mr. Bones uh, video game character, but no, I am talking about, I am talking about the character uh, I believe co-created by uh, Todd McFarland for DC Comics within the pages of the 1980s classic Infinity Inc. GD. That's a deep cut. Wowzers! I uh, need to show you this uh, I have a right feeling fucking this is now. Gonna be shared. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh yeah. Here we go. Here we go. Mr. Bones coming at you in the chat. Give this the listeners good, your this reaction. Is a great listener experience here. <laughs> I was gonna say yeah. this is what podcasters. Really wait, wait, <laughs> shit! I clicked the wrong thing. Fuck, 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 fuck. I was gonna say I know this is not Mr. Bones. This is like a skeleton on an iPad. Ah, shit, shit. Where is it? I love to get on my iPad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> hey man I support Apple products almost oh, there listeners are almost sure enjoying there. this all the listeners almost are exercising there. and driving <laughs> they're all like god damn it what is going on if I, if I had known this important fact was going to come up I'd have had it queued up already you never know when you're going to need to present Mr. Bones on a moment's notice Mr. Bones whoa it is Spawn Cape <laughs> wow McFarlane really ripped McFarlane off. He McFarlane sure did, Raven. McFarlane. He sure did. Mm. Well, he's even got the little fingers and the little glowing energy. Wow. Mm-hmm. Proto Spawn, tri- Mr. Bones. I can't believe DC hasn't done anything with Mr. Bones. Oh, actually, Mr. Bones is a regular character in the DC universe. He's. Yeah, that first picture you saw of the guy in the suit, it's the same character. He's now like a like a like a government flunky, but also evil. It's a whole thing. Huge huge downgrade. Yes. He should have the cape and everything and he should be crying over his wife. And <laughs> just have a spawn costume with a skull face. And yeah. Just be like, "What? We we were here first. <laughs> he, he should be crying over his uh wife Lafonda. <laughs> oh, La, oh, Lafonda. Oh. Oh, I'm in hell. Oh. <laughs> 300 issues later. Oh, LaFonda, I'm in hell. Oh, oh, oh. 
My powers are taking down, but they never quite run out. Boo. Oh, my, my Mr. Spawn, Bones meter. Those hot spawn takes. <laughs> my Mr. bones meter is running low. I'll be, I'm going to return to the bone zone when my meter's low. <laughs> this devil guy with a perm is chasing me. <laughs> yeah, with a belly, beer belly and a perm. <laughs> Looks like Kenny Omega. <laughs> um, you know, I love this uh, outfit Hannah's in. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think it's cool. You would. I think it's cool, but I will say that I think it is overly sexy for what I thought was an all ages book. Yeah, was I that, don't think was, Eric had a lot of choice because I'm pretty sure this outfit is taken from the the Gully series. Because a lot, I think yeah, a lot of if, this a lot of this issue is heavily referenced from the Gully series. And anything, if you look at the back anything, pages, anything, it shows it. Anything that doesn't look like something Eric would choose is probably mm-hmm. from the Gully series. Well, Craig, you were saying it, and we're like right in the back. You shows got, all like, the pages, yeah, yeah, that he's copying. But it's just one of those things where it's like I'm just laughing because it's like when he started the series, he's like, ah, oh, you know, I just kind of want Ant to be more of an all ages book, and I'm just like, nobody's hmm. gonna let their kids read this. Like when they see Hannah walking down the streets with the camel toe with her, and the with like, her, with her Jay-Z shirt. Yeah, I love Jay Z. It's timeless. Hove. <laughs> young. Uh-huh. Young H-O-V. You know why he had to yell young in every song? Because he looks old as fuck. He's always looked old. <laughs> Jay-Z. It's true. He looks 50, and he was like 20. I was just like, what the hell? So he had to yell young in his songs for people to like, under. oh, shit, he's not old. He's young. Look at me. I'm young. I'm a young guy. Young, not old. H-O-V. He's got the best bitch in the game, so we can't mock him too much. But I'm mock him a little bit. Whatever happened so, to the other 26 Js? <laughs> How'd we end up at Jay-Z? What happened the to the 25 other ones? 25, Wait, thank you. I, I, I think it's because his name's Jay Zuckerberg. <laughs> it yeah, is I not. I think that's real. <laughs> <laughs> it's, 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 I, 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 actually, I actually think that's real. That's not real. There's no way. <laughs> He's not. What Berenstain universe like discovery am I about to learn? Okay. Apparently, he also infor- started Facebook. <laughs> yeah. Okay. My information was wrong. His Big name top. may be Sean Carter. It is. You know, he only says it in every other song or whatever. <laughs> but but it's also Jay Zuckerberg. Jay Zuckerberg. <laughs> Brother to Mark. <laughs> uh-huh. Yeah. That's actually a secret to Facebook. You know, Hove gave yeah, him that's alone. actually his rap name. <laughs> oh, they look so much alike. <laughs> oh, my God. This is out of control. This Vincas is off the rails. You know what Nas's real name is, right? Nausea Medicine? No. Josh Silverstein. <laughs> what? Are you joking? Yes. Okay. All right. I just don't know anymore, dude. Well, you, you, you know the public enemy are Jewish, right? <laughs> yes. Yes. Is we're, this we're a bit? Keep going. No. Yeah, of course it is. Next, you're going to tell me the Beastie Boys are Jewish. I don't know. <laughs> Get out of here. Get out of town with your jokes and your bits. Um, Hannah's outfit is sexy. I appreciate it. I'm just saying I appreciate it, but I don't know if parents would. Um, but I liked it. I think it's cool. Um, I think this is a cool look for her. I like it. And again, it doesn't look like some like an outfit Eric would put a character in. It's just look, kind of look, funny. F- fingerless I'm gloves. I'm, I'm still thinking of Jay Zuckerberg. Yeah, <laughs> I'm, That's fine. I'm sorry. I'm just gonna stare at Mr. Bones while you while you take in Jay Zuckerberg. <laughs> I'm never gonna listen to a Jay Z song again. I think of that. <laughs> oh. That's how you land Beyonce. You got to make Facebook. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> so I'm sure a lot of people probably were continuing to be confused about Ant. No, uh, it was instantly cleared up. I just want to say it was. Yes, the minute she says right there, it's it's cleared up on page one. That's why I'm laughing that you're like fuck you. You guys were wrong. Even in the last fincast, I said, you know what? I bet 
I bet next issue we'll know immediately. And it was on the very first page. She goes, I recently woke up from a nightmare. I thought it was a life. I was confined in a mental institution, drugged out of my mind. Boom. There you go. The present of the past. Yeah, it's still uh, still the past. <laughs> right. Uh, her memories are still messed up, though, because she tells us, I believe, that uh, she doesn't really remember how she got back to the U.S., or New York, even. Or yeah, exactly. And and also, Aunt is everywhere, which is weird. Aunt's a celebrity. <laughs> it's and it's weirder yeah. that Hannah doesn't know she's Aunt. She's like, what? Yeah, she's and still everyone the... thinks that Aunt died. Yeah. Oh, that's right. Yep. Yeah. That that's a whole thing. I guess so. Aunt... Apparently, that that last scene in was it Iraq? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Was she? the world thinks she died there and that's what data man's trying is promoting in his comic based on the tales of what happened to ant i guess i don't know does that make sense let's uh not take a moment i mean let's not just breeze past this comic convention because i gotta say i didn't know that i needed eric larson to draw a comic convention but i did he and hasn't it, done this that, is, he hasn't done that before i'm actually surprised <laughs> Has he? No, I, 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 you're right. No. I don't think he's ever done a comic convention story. And and here's what's so great. It's just loaded with, like, just great stuff. Like, just that shitty dragon that's checking in. With a bad fin. <laughs> yeah. Bad fin. He's got a, he's got the uh, handlebar mustache. <laughs> the, the guy, the Mako uh, mask. Yeah, just the mask. Yeah. <laughs> he made no attempt to make his arms. Look like he's got his man. little like squiggly face guy that Eric was drawn since high school. I was going to ask you, what is that guy? That's just a thing. That, it's like one a of gag? Eric Eric's create our own guys. Or Wait, whatever, little thing where is the since. where is squiggly face guy? Above, Above Mako. Mako. Above. Wait a minute. Oh, that thing. That yeah. face is shown up in multiple comics yeah. of his, but he's been drawing that since high school. There was a Fincast retro. Isn't this guy a thing like a recurring hidden character? Like the schnoods or something like Sometimes. that? Sometimes. No, it's something from his youth. No, well, I love it. Okay, so I had to double check. The actual, like, the the panel where we see the Invincible poster, that's mm-hmm. from Gully. So that's a recreation. Okay. That, that's a panel recreation. Uh, the okay. One, the one with the Mako face is new from Eric. Okay. So, the, the in fact, the uh, Bad Dragon cosplay was in the original Gully panel. Which I <laughs> shout outs to Mario. Um, yeah, comic convention gags are fun. Love it, dude. Love it. So, Dadaman is trying to sort of sell a lie. Yes, he's got the aunt. She didn't do it alone, which clearly she did. That was you know established. This is, what's funny is this even him th- him saying this even clears up the the last issue where we're like oh what happened like did she just blank out and wipe out all those people or what it's like no she fucking wiped out fucking everyone just on her own she went nuts and Gadget Man is obviously trying to cover for her he has somehow arranged it to where he has faked her death and is trying to hide the fact that she in fact wiped out an army all right he's he's hijacked the narrative uh you know as a way to cover yeah to protect her um it is a weird way to go about it to be just like super public about it and especially this whole bit with uh what's her name jessica mime who again i'm pretty sure is a gully creation because this whole it is yeah yeah very un-eric esque but i do like I like her. I think she looks cool. Yeah, she can mime like guns or whatever. That that is a pretty cool um, concept. Yes, make constructs. And I like her flunkies. Like her flunkies are cool. Yeah, it's very Batman. Yeah, yeah. I don't think the name Jessica Mime is so great, but the character is pretty good. Jessica right. Mime. Jessica Mime. It doesn't sound like a pun. Yeah, I was trying to make it. That's the thing I was going to ask. Is like. Is that a gag? Like, how's that work? 
Yeah, why not just say the mime or something? Yeah, the mime is better than Jessica mime. Oh, uh, I, I thought her I thought her abilities might have been like her abilities, but she's got like like tech wrist things, so it must be technology. Well, I like her. I hope she well, sticks around. Forget, actually, she's considered an actor here. So yeah, I think that might be. See again, we haven't read the original Gully story. I get the sense that that's Eric retconning this fight. Uh, you know, I have the original issues. I guess I should probably try to read them. I tried once <laughs> and I got through it, but I pushed a lot of it out of my mind because it's not very good. <laughs> but I should probably give it a reread for this. Uh, I'm going to take a moment to appreciate some sequential art. Up. <laughs> okay. I want to just appreciate some sequential art. Um, on the Richards has the answers I need, a yeah, opposite yeah. of the Jessica Mime. What, uh, what, do you like one, best, what do you like best about it? Oh. Under you, boob. You know that Abs. for sure. But the other thing I like is the uh, panel, the last panel on the last uh, left hand side of that where she's like, you know, thap, spack, whack, taking out all three henchmen. Yep. Yeah. And she's running just on very, the wall. Yeah, it's very good economic. Like one panel, she's beating up three dudes. It's pretty cool. I love six panel layouts with action like this. Yeah. It's fucking good, dude. I mean, like I said, I don't know if this is a Mario cover page. It feels very Eric. But uh, either I way. I love, love like it. you watch like the first panel. She flips back. You see her land. She like hits with a, a right punch to the groin and then a left punch uppercut. It's just, I don't know, it's just good. Sequential art, like, baby. Love it. It's good. I mean, you get a whole fight scene in just like three pages. Did I lose everyone? No. 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 <laughs> just trying to think where to pick up and continue. Well, basically, she beats the shit out of the henchmen and Jessica Mime, and then we find out that it's all a show, a staged show, and they're not really super villains. And it's like, oh, what the hell? And I guess that's what Data Man, or whatever his name is. Gadget is Man. Name. Gadget Man. Oh, Gadget yeah. Man. And, but he uh, calls him uh, he's Steve. He, Steve. Who's supposedly some famous comic writer now, is all pissed off at her. And doesn't he doesn't appear to recognize her now do you guys think that's true or do you think he's hiding the fact that he knows it's her i think he's hiding it gotta lean towards hiding yeah, if he is. was like hannah get off the stage it'd ruin everything <laughs> you know everything he's worked to do so at this point do you guys think that this is all a construct in her mind or you think this is really happening well i think this is really happening for Me sure. too. Um, yeah, because she's she's wandering around in like a fugue state, trying to make sense of her life, and she's seeing all these people and images from what she thought was not real, and she's mm-hmm. just trying to make sense of like why it is real. And she even mentions she even mentions she's like uh, in the comic, she's like I just kicked in an instinct. Yeah. She's like, you know, don't worry, Gadget, I've got this. Like, she saw Gadget Man in danger and just instinctively jumped up there and started kicking ass. But I'm pretty sure, I'm not pretty sure, I'm 100% sure this is all real. She's just confused. Yeah. And uh, she also says, I may, uh, when uh, when Jessica Mime is grabbing her leg, she's thinking, I'm making rookie mistakes, so I'm not using all of my ability or training. And then she pauses and says, training? So, like, she doesn't really understand how she can do these things she's just doing them and and again we've seen this before where she basically reacts on instinct to all this stuff because of how her her mind has been messed with and we even know from last issue that her mind is like getting wiped because she remembered training in the last issue she's like ah those were the best days of my life and now that she's out of the mental mental institution she's like training well, whatever, just go with it. So it's like, clearly so, she's had a mind wipe. But well, what's well, weird to me is mm-hmm. that Jessica Mime, if she's an actor, so there's a panel after, like, Hannah beats up everybody and then the security jumps in. Mm-hmm. 
one of the henchmen goes, Jessica? Like, why would he be calling an actor Jessica? Well, her name's probably still Jessica. An, an actor, actor named Jessica? No, I'm That's playing Jessica? <laughs> that's why it makes me wonder if, like, it's just Hannah's memories are still all screwed up. And this is something that's reality and, I don't know, something, you know, something in our mind are still mixing. I don't know. It just seems weird I, that I he think would the henchman, say Jessica. I think, I, I think the henchman is just concerned about his partner. Uh, I, I don't think it is crazy to think that the actress' name is Jessica and the character she's playing is also Jessica. By the way, let's not breeze over the fact that uh, Gadget Man is using an alias to do his whole thing. He, oh, wait, no, he's Stephen Richards. No, never mind. I'm fucking stupid. Stephen Richards. She yells Richards. They call him Stephen. Never mind. Stephen Richards. That's good. I guess Gadget oh, Man's oh, real right. name is yeah, Stephen yeah. Richards. Yeah, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Anyway, Gadget Man. Yeah, do, where does he call him? Where's uh, the guy call uh, her Jessica? Which uh, do, panel do you is see the, the, the panel? The very end of the yeah. the very end of the oh, fight. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, I see him. By security, I, I think the guy's just concerned about her because she has her nose broken. Just weird that he calls her Jessica if they're playing a role, unless, like you said, her name is Jessica. Is I'll agree. You know what? I'm not confused. I still think these are just actors, and I think that like Ant is confused, but I think that that guy saying Jessica does add confusion to the moment. <laughs> if he had said. Lisa, it would have been like better, or yeah, if he'd been like been Lisa, like, oh, are yeah, you okay, like... or something like that. But yeah, it is weird. I don't know. And again, this is being written this way. Maybe Eric meant for that to sort of throw you for a loop. Because again, it is weird that that guy would be like Jessica when like she's supposed to be an actor. So I don't know. I do know that a Hulk cosplayer wearing green flip flops is funny. <laughs> I like that. Isn't that match the Defender silent issue when Hulk wore flip flops? I think. Oh no, he wore bunny uh, slippers. <laughs> hey, Flash Mercury's here. Flash Mercury in the house. So Superman. I have, so I have to wonder if that's the actual spawn up nah. there. Maybe no, it's, it's a cosplayer. It plays into a gag later. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Yeah, she says I saw better spawn costumes at the convention. Ah. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's his classic costume. He's not in that costume in this. Right. Because yeah. he, remember, he, re- he got out of hell after the war. Hell. Yeah, he's got yeah. his trench coat on. His bones meter was low. You see the crappy Superman suit in the last panel when she's leaving the comic book convention. He's got the seams. <laughs> mm-hmm. So. I love it. So here's something interesting. Mm-hmm. Again, we're on the same page with the Spawn cosplay in the Flash Mercury, and she's thinking to herself, but I saw things, they seem so real. A whole scenario played out in my head with Savage Dragon and Spawn. It was night, it was raining, and I was Ant. What's happened to me? What is she referencing there? Is that the previous? No. That's what's about to happen, isn't it? That's right. Yeah, but I could have swore what's about to happen already happened. Or it, I think this, the story is being told it, a little out of sequence, I think. Or is it... Uh, but there's no dragon here, and there's no rain well, here. Well, is it from... Because Ant Issue 2 had Savage Dragon and Spawn. Like, not, not Eric's series. Marvel's. Oh, right! Yes, you're right. Okay, so that's confusing if you haven't read those issues, I guess. It didn't confuse me too much. I just assumed it was some shit that she was remembering that we weren't supposed to necessarily know. Right. Okay. So I wasn't too worried about it. So, so we can presume she's talking about scenarios that we saw in the Mario Gully series, which are not going to be shown in this series is what she's basically referencing here. But I will say she would have said Malcolm Dragon. That makes sense, yeah. So the so th- we can assume those are considered like uh, fantasies in her head that we are just um, shown. It's left to your interpretation. He yeah. said in the letters column like multiple times he's going to leave that up to the readers. So like if you want to discard Mario's stuff, you can. If you want to consider it canon, you can. 
but anywhere he's left it vague, it's it's left on vague uh, vague on purpose. I just realized something really stupid that I should have realized. You know how mm-hmm. I kept I keep saying that this takes place in the past. Oh well, no! Can't, here it, it comes. It, it, it can't take place in the past because she's encountering Spawn and Malcolm as they are in the present. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> I may have overthought that. I'm not going to fall down the confusion hole with you again. <laughs> I'm just going to keep... I feel good. I feel good this issue. I'm going to keep moving forward. I feel real good today. I think her landlord is awesome. Like, just what an awesome stump-headed looking dude. Yeah, that's a Mario Gully guy. Yeah. He looks Go- funny as hell. He's he's in the original comics. I think, I think Gully... This is Mario Gully, Page. I think Gully like to draw ugly people sometimes. Because <laughs> this guy and the bully both are just really extreme characters. Yeah, <laughs> it's kind of funny. They're very comic-y, like caricature-y. I kind of like that. Do you guys find it funny that like um, Hannah just like you know gets naked and goes in the sewers? <laughs> it's very always sunny. You know, so what is, is that in our mind? What's going on here? Well, here's to the, the thing. sewers. Here's here's the thing is um, this whole scene where she's looking at her tablet, where it says I keep getting messages on the tablet and they keep sending me links and asking me to look at this and go there, and it says she falls down a rabbit hole. Is she I, getting triggered I, by I someone? I think she's getting subliminal messages from my presume maybe Gadget Man, but possibly she, another party. And she's I think getting missions for sure. They're missions. Yeah. But I could have, but, yeah, I mean, missions. She's like, she's getting sent on missions and totally blacks out and then it's like yeah. wondering how she got places. Yeah. Yeah. But, it, but where the mission's coming from, because I could have swore the end of the last issue, Gadget Man had cleared her of her uh, mental programming. I mean, that was the whole idea is that she he, she was freed from this. So either I don't think he, either he, I don't think he freed her, he was trying to protect her and that's what the whole cover was. He may still very much be using her for missions. But that was the Iraq War how many years ago? Yeah, but she hasn't aged at all. I assume it's... I don't know. It, it never says I Iraq War. It, 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 it never says Iraq War. It, it very well no. could, could have just been in Iraq. Because the original Ant series it was. Would have been during the Iraq War originally. It's it, Like I said, the yeah. timeline is now unclear because I had thought this was taking place uh See, I thought maybe past. she went from... 18 to like, I don't know. Well, that's a thing. 16 to like. Iraq war was 20 years ago now. She definitely doesn't look 20 years older. Yeah, that's true. I think the timeline is just kind of fudged now. And maybe it's chalk it up to her memory problems, but also because the realities of having to do this comic book. Yeah. But I think we can. Something's going on where someone's pro. She's programmed. Yeah, yeah she's I, getting missions. It's like Winter Soldier type thing going on where she's getting triggered to. And she's even got a code name, Bug Girl. Like, oh, the thing actually, is, actually, it straight up says a message from a stranger brought me here. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, she's. It's, it's like their missions. Like you know, here's go here, do this, check this out. And then the minute she gets down in the sewers and starts fighting, she's like, "Oh shit, yeah, I'm Ant. I always was." Man, so it's like it's like must be so much E. coli in that water. <laughs> she's got a protective candy shell. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> like an M M&M. and M. BMs have nothing on M and Ms. I gotta say that splash page with the Braca Thum with Spider King. I love that. Thum on Brackathum with all the cracks. Mm-hmm. That looks terrific. Yeah, a lot of good lettering in this issue. A lot of good coloring. Good job, Eric. Yeah, the green highlights on the bottom of Ant on the one oh. panel. Oh, yeah, dude. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. You mean the Thrakabadoom panel, right? Yeah. With all the different colored bricks. Ooh, yeah. It's, it's good. And then she just pops against that blue night sky. Yeah. Good shit, dude. And it's interesting yeah, well, that she's reacting saying, I I am Ant. I was Ant the whole time. And Stephen Richards' stupid book is a load of crap. It's almost like when she is Ant, her memories like coalesce. 
And and we'll see. And see, that's the thing. So that's the through line in the comic. Like just in the beginning of the issue, she's like, ah, my head's fucking fuzz. I've got 600 bucks and an iPad. And I don't know how the fuck I got to New York. Then the minute she gets where she's being sent, she realized everything was bullshit and she was in it the whole time. Right. And so it's kind of like, I think that you're right on the money with that sentence or, or sentiment. I mean to say is that, you know, when clearly when Hannah is on missions, she's clear as a bell. And then I think the minute she's off a mission, yeah, it's, it's fuzz again. And so whoever set that up, whether it's gadget man, which we know from the spawn issues, she tells Malcolm, you know, me and gadget man are fighting this consortium, you know, that's trying to bring apart, bring about the rapture. And so we know from the spawn issues that that Hannah knows at that moment that she's working with gadget man. So I'm getting the sneaking feeling that like gadget man's the one on the iPad sending her missions. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, I can't confirm it, but it makes a ton of sense. Yeah. And she's just, when she's off the clock, she's fuzzy Hannah. She doesn't know what the fuck's going on. It's, I see the thing is, is I felt like super clarity this issue. I didn't feel confused at all. Well, there's nothing really in this issue that isn't except for maybe that transition between her bedroom and the sewer. There's nothing here that makes you wonder if is this real? Is this not real? What uh, point in time is this taking place in relation to everything else? It's all very Mm -hmm. straight. Man, I love that Larson uh, star sky. Yeah, (laughs) it's good, right? (laughs) Yeah, yeah. Um, Yeah. Go ahead. No, I was just going to say, I, I, I want to add that it's funny um, if you follow Eric on social media, uh, Hannah's thing in the sewer about there not being one actual, like, giant conspiracy theory they, but it's just, it's like little groups with like, you know, goals. <laughs> right. She, she, like, he, he's actually said that on social media. He's like, ah, you know, people like conspiracy theories because they help people feel comfortable, like if things make sense, but... You know, it doesn't really make sense. Like, there's just little groups that have shared goals. And that's literally, like, he's putting that in the ant book. I just find it and funny so, that Spawn is of hell. So, trying to bring about the rapture isn't that crazy when Spawn's around. <laughs> I did think that was funny yeah. that he was like, well, that's madness. I'm like, is it hell, Spawn? Is it? Is, is it, it really? Is it, though? I'm using high voice. Is it though? A lot, a lot of toxic waste barrels in New York sewers. I mean, mutagenous, dude. Got to get them yeah. turtles somehow. And human skulls. <laughs> I bet there's some human skulls in the New York sewers. That's <laughs> what's absolutely. That's <laughs> what's sad. <laughs> I think it's cool to like. I was worried there'd be too much of this. I was we're, we're kind of in like some reused page territory, right? And and, and I, I was yeah, I was worried there'd be too much of this, but it's actually I thought it was going to be a retelling of the whole issue from like Ant's point of view. I really right. thought that it at ki- first it kind of is, but it's just not the whole issue. It's a few pages overall. I mean, the important it's not thing as is much. Everything isn't covered in caption boxes. <laughs> And it's not like he reused all the pages. Yeah, I, I, I mean he, that's what's nice is it's sparing. He he did reuse his double page spread though, right? Oh yeah, the Thum. Yeah. No, the no, they, the, no, no, the one in the sewer with Ant and Spawn running at King's. Oh Bay. yeah, yeah, the one with the skull and the toxic waste. Yeah, yeah, for yeah. sure. But he changed up the dialogue and stuff. And yep. plus, too, this is mine. This is presented minus the McFarlane noodling. Yes. Yeah. No. So noodles. it's still like, it's cool. Like it's kind of like, you you it's reused material, but like also not really because it's kind of fresh. I liked it. I mean, I was not. I was prepared to like have. Oh no, there's too much recycled material. But like, man, eh, didn't really feel that way to me when I was reading it. Felt fresh. It also helps that that's been a while ago, hasn't it? Hasn't it been like two years ago? What, feels like, like it was wait, bef- wait, wait, hold on. Two, what was two years ago? Wasn't the spawn ant thing? Oh Malcolm my god, dude. The- that was no, like five or six that, years ago. Yeah. Oh my god. How'd I get in New York? Uh, here we go. Clickety click. I've got an iPad. 
and six hundred dollars. What am I doing? Where am I? I lost three years of my life in a sentence. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this would be this issue and the date on this issue in the copyright. Well, I knew it was years ago. I, I, I didn't think it was five, August, five years ago. August 2016. So it's actually seven or six. <laughs> Fudge. That's Fudge. amazing. So, yeah, I'm not going to slight him reusing pages from six years ago. <laughs> Who gives a fuck? And he didn't really reuse them anyway. He just presented them in his original style. So I'm cool with it. Like, I think it was a success. I, I don't mind it at all. Um, yeah. It's cool. Uh, I think Spider King has some... P.S. Comixology's browser reader is still busted three or four months <laughs> later. Sorry, I don't know if I said anything about that on uh, this program, but uh, mm-hmm. Comixology updated and consolidated Comixology with Amazon, and mm-hmm. their comics reader on the actual the browser has been busted for double page spreads the entire time. Uh, normal pages look fine, but a double page spread gets squeezed into the, the shape of a single page. And then Ugh. there are, then it is cropped with black bars at the top and bottom and you <laughs> cannot zoom in. It looks like shit. It's completely broken. And it's been like this for months. Fucking hell. Amazon fucking hell. Who's a paper plebeian now? Yeah. <sighs> It just it, it works it works fine on my iPad, but on the freaking computer, it's just absolute worthless. It's crazy. Mm-hmm. I don't. Plebeian. <laughs> Paper plebeian. Um, that's horrible, Jim. I mean, I'm really sorry. Uh, Amazon sucks shit, and for a lot of reasons. And hey, what can I say? I always knew everybody's always like, "Oh, Comixology cool, is incredible." I was like, "Yeah, you know, it's probably not an awesome <laughs> idea." Throwing all your support behind one company. Probably not going to be great all the time forever. <laughs> who who could have guessed? Glo- now look who's gloating. Mm-hmm. Paper plebeian. Um, <laughs> the power of heaven earth is on our side. What do you guys think he means about that? I think he's being literal. You think he least... literally thinks heaven is on his side? I, I think he might. I think he believes it. Earth would obviously be the government people who sent him, but like heaven, like what the fuck is what's what's he referring to? What's he think? Well, he's part of the the zealots made by like that Alzea Stone guy. So, so you guys don't cult. really think he thinks angels because Spawn has angels. Like the thing with this is Spawn's presence. There's yeah. angels in Spawn, so there like sure he, are. <laughs> you don't think there's any kind of like Spawn heaven representation in this plot, do you? Probably I mean, not. Right? I mean, there, I mean, maybe no. there, maybe there's a literal, maybe there's, a, maybe there's something to their, their, their plans. Maybe something real is going on. I mean, he has powers. Maybe something gave him powers. Isaiah Stone gave him powers. Oh right, yeah. But I'm, and, and he's working for the consortium. But when he says heaven and earth's on our side, do you think he's just talking like, well, we're, we're on a mission from God, or do you think there might be some angelic presence? I'm just well, asking what I you mean, guys you read, think. Read the, the, the panel from Ant. It says, there's a man down in New Mexico named Alzea Stone who's using his mutant powers to create these creatures. Religious zealots and social misfits are making a pilgrimage to his stronghold. So they're all like kind of cultists. Yeah. Mm. Okay. That's, so that's it's just I think it is. it's just cult talk. Okay. Yeah, well, I was just but, asking but here, for your but that, speculation. But that's the thing. He has supernatural powers. It's very well he could have a, while I highly doubt it's heaven, he could have a connection to some force in the universe that he, he, that is twisted to, that he believes to be heavenly. Right. How ironic is that these guys are trying to bring about the rapture and they're fighting like fucking spawn. <laughs> yeah. That just worked out for him. Real lucky, lucky break. Um, Craig, we praised the green highlights earlier, but uh, let me just say, I also love the magenta highlights on Ant. Yeah. Oh, it yeah. looks good as fuck. Oh my god, it looks good in print. Yeah. Yeah, uh, Spider King dies of a staph infection. More pointy metal deaths. 
Granted, this one was a long time ago. This, this was back when I was bitching about it more. Sewer. Imagine. You got to imagine that was sewer dipped. Yeah. <laughs> you get a, a stick. Got, well, no, wait. I said rabies. I'm an idiot. So ten, tetanus is like lockjaw and shit like that, right? Yeah. He's got a staff, he's a literal staph infection, like just New Yorker poop. <laughs> New Yorker poop just jam right through his you know, vitals. Oh, this is just a solid rod of dookie. Yes. <laughs> Uranium rod <laughs> out the butt out the butthole. <laughs> Eat no. turd, Spider King. <laughs> um yeah, man. Uh, it's funny, too, that Spawn's like, you seem unfazed. This isn't your first time. It's like, bro, Spawn, how many people have you killed? Shut up, you judgmental butthole. Yeah, what? right, especially when you were a human. Yeah. Well, I think I think Spawn might be one of those characters that think uh, other people should be better than him. What a double yeah, standard. Right. <laughs> let, let, let Spawn do the murders. He, he, he's already tainted. I'm fighting for the soul of Gotham. <laughs> Harvey Dent has to be better than me. <laughs> can, I, can we talk about the black and white uh, pinup kind of like the original cover to the Spawn? Yeah, yeah, man. And, uh, Savage Dragon, how cool they look in black and white. I really, really, really like the way I they think look. Ant looks fucking awesome in that black and white cover. Yeah. No like, light. just look at her face and, like, the cross-hatching. Like, whoa, it's so good. I've o- right. I've always loved the Dragon Archives, just so you could see all this stuff in Stark yeah. inks. Because Eric's inks are some of the best in the universe. Nice. He did the, he's an Inkwell, an Inkpot award winner. One cool thing I noticed just now, looking at this uh, back matter, is, you know, we were talking about the whole... Uh, flash sequence where she's saving gadget man in the comic con uh you can see that mario's original uh sequence had Ant in a much more delusional state where she's literally thinking she's ant oh like, okay gadget, yeah and Ga- yeah it's raining and gadget man isn't even in his suit and then what's so funny is the jessica line which we were like why would eric do that is verbatim from the original comic right so it's kind of like all he's doing there is just preserving the original comics sort of sort of confused. I don't know. I'm just saying we can't beat Eric up over stuff like this. It was he's just preserving a scene from the original well, comic. Maybe there's no such thing as Jessica Mime. Maybe the I, actress's name is Jessica and in her weird altered state she thinks that there's really a villain called Jessica Mime or something. Also, just looking at these these uh, Mario Gully panels, that that weird wolf whistle from mm-hmm. earlier that uh, that um, I, some things never change. No, no, the the one with the, like the weird pigtail and then the two hearts. Uh huh. Yeah. yeah, yeah, that's a Gully that's thing. That's copied. Yeah. Oh, dude, check out this word balloon from the original comic. When Jessica Mime comes on stage, the guy goes, "Yes, that's Jessica Mime." And uh, he goes, she's cute and quick. Check out, uh, she's cute and check out those guns. This convention always puts on the best shows. Awesome costume. So it's funny because in the original sequence, it was like much more clear to the con attendees anyway that it was like you know a stage show. Oh yeah, okay. It's kind of a funny change. Huh. Obviously, Eric. Obviously, Eric took that dialogue out so that the reader could sort of be confused with Hannah. Yep. Right. But it's funny because in the original material, like the people in the crowd aren't confused at all. Right. It's <laughs> it's just Hannah. Huh. Yeah. That's interesting. I'm I'm glad these pages are in the back. Yeah. It definitely helps add a little bit more context to things. And I guess Eric said that it's up to us to decide what's what's canonical and what isn't. Yeah, there's even a letter in this issue where he says that. Like, he's yeah. basically like, yeah, whatever I keep, you know. He's like, I'm just giving you, what's he call it? He calls it a visual focal point. Hold on, let me try to see if I can find the exact actual. Uh, I'm trying to give readers a visual focal point so they can uh, 
Yada, da, 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 da. Okay, okay, yeah, here he goes. He goes, yeah, it's the first paragraph. He goes, part of this uh, attempt involves translating Mario's panels into my style, and the basic idea is to give readers a visual touchstone for those events. And uh, readers have asked if they need to read the previous series. The answer is no. Everything you need can be in these pages. Of course, if you want to read them, that's perfectly fine, but in no way necessary. This is designed to stand on its own. So you just, you know, take it or leave it. If you want to go back, cool. If you don't, whatever. But it's got those visual touchstones so that you can kind of just sort of connect the moments together if you want. I feel like I need to go back and look at it because I feel like it might give more insight into things. And I'm going to choose to let it go. I just don't feel the need to track that stuff down. Yeah. I, I just think maybe it will help with us since I have them. I might as well, right? Yeah. And maybe it's totally been changed. Who knows? <laughs> You sound so excited. I really don't want to read that. <laughs> just, don't, just don't, dude. Just don't. You don't have to. I, I, I do in a way, though. Like, I feel like like looking at these panels, like you said, we're catching these little things that Eric chose to leave out. and Maybe it would bring some more insight that we wouldn't normally have just by reading the issues without the back matter. Or at least we can be like, oh, he went this in a, this direction rather than Mario's direction, you know? Well, I, for one, can say that I feel 100% more clear. I don't feel confused at all. And my feelings on this issue are much stronger. I think the book is getting better with each issue. It's getting more clear with each issue. I stand by what I said. I think if you're going to have a clean start, have a clean start. Mm-hmm. Probably just would have been better for readers in general. But Eric's got to do his thing. He's got to go back and put these pieces together for his own satisfaction. So you know what? Whatever. It's coming together real good for me. I think it's better. I give this a strong eight and a half. So I'm a little bit slightly more negative about this issue. That's I okay. Lo- I like this issue. I think it Mm -hmm. looks great. I like the story. I like all the beats. I think there's a little bit too much reuse in this issue specifically, where Eric is either reusing the gully stuff or reusing his own stuff from the spawn issue. It's just having both so close together. I think if I have the benefit of not having read the gully stuff, so that stuff is still new to me, but if I'm Mm -hmm. someone who's read both of those issues in the past, I might be a little bit too... Uh, distracted by the amount of uh, reuse or um, um, uh, copying, I guess. Mm -hmm. Repurposing. Repurposing, yes. I feel like fans appreciate that. Like that Eric is paying tribute and not just dumping all the gully stuff. So I hear what you're saying, but I also think that there's a contingent that would probably appreciate that he's doing that. That he's trying to say, and not just trying to rewrite the character. You know what I mean? Yes. Trying to salvage what's there and pay homage to what's been drawn previously. Right. But I don't know. I'm sure you can't please everybody. I'm just, How you feeling? I'm just really eager for him to get to a point in the story where everything is him. Me too. Just, just to Me see. Too. Just to see what he what he does i mean i guess technically issue 12 was that because he wrote and drew that issue but i i I, guess i hmm? I, i'm kind of having fun seeing how he interprets mario's work in certain panels i mean we're getting a mix of both and i think even with the coloring aspect and the inking aspect is totally different than savage dragon i'm for me i'm fine with it I I, uh, I kind of like it, and I think he actually probably draws Hannah like sexier than he probably would on his own, right? Which I think is kind of nice. I don't know. I like. I kind of like it. <laughs> hmm. But I don't so know. how are you Either feeling? Way, I'd be happy. You still feeling sixty and seventy on it? 
I'm yeah. feeling very sixy. No, I'm feeling. <laughs> I'm feeling like this is a seven for me. I'm not this this ant comic. I'm not like this is the best thing since sliced bread for me. I'm feeling it gets slightly above average, but it's interesting to me. Like I'm not like for me. I'm not like this is a throwaway. This is just mediocre i do like what's happening i like that i'm confused and don't know what's going on and it's going to take a little while um but it's not something that's like i can't wait for the next issue you know yeah it, there's a lack of cliffhanger element to it isn't there i i think the cliffhanger itself is just the story it's just like when are we going to find out what's going on you know like I think the whole story is one big cliffhanger because we're still trying to piece together things like she is. Well, you know what? Fucking A. I mean, It's kind of hard to do a cliffhanger if we know what's going to happen next, which we do, right? I mean, pretty yeah. much. You know she has to at least get down to Mexico and fight Isaiah Stone. And right, then- and so how is that going to be? How do you think that's going to be covered? Because... It's one thing to do like half an issue and rehash the spawn thing. It's another thing to like rehash a whole nother, you know, what do you think is going to happen with this Matt, you know, the team up with Malcolm in the next issue? Is it going to rehash the whole thing that we've already done, which was our fear with this issue and it didn't really happen? I don't, I don't have that fear because this issue alleviated that fear. So you think think they'll just show things that we didn't see on panel? Yeah, Malcolm didn't even know Hannah was on the plane behind him in the original issue. And Hannah's on the plane. She rides a plane down to Mexico sitting behind Malcolm. So I think there's all kinds of fun and funny stuff you can have happen. Uh, Plus two, at the end of that fight, she just kind of disappears. And Malcolm's left alone. So does Spawn. So it's kind of like... Do you guys think in this issue we're going to see Isaiah Stone survive somehow? Whereas she, we presumed he's dead in the his original appearance. I that's, and you, I kind of hope so, but I guess that's the big question. And do you think he's going to be like the ant major baddie, the antagonist? <laughs> <laughs> <Touché>. Nice, <laughs> nice. Yeah, dude. I I I, I hope. Um, I think a good twist is what we really need. A, a good twist would really hit the spot, especially with all this uh, previously covered ground. And so a fresh take on an old story would be nice. And we never saw him again in Dragon, but that doesn't mean that he wasn't, you know, continuing to work for this covert organi- organization that's trying to bring about the biblical rapture. And help me out here. So Ragnarok is before Alzea Stone, right? No, after. After. He is after. Okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's, yeah, that's after. Uh, it is. Because that's so after. Because right? I'm Because, again, I'm pretty sure the Alzea Stone stuff is before Malcolm goes to Toronto. And uh, Okay. Uh, and uh, Yeah, because he's still a cop. Ragnarok yep. is in Toronto. Okay, so Malcolm's yep. still a cop. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, Ragnar, uh, Ragnar's in. Okay, got it. Yeah, okay. Cool, so we know that Anne is still fighting against the Consortium as, as, as like, late as into the Toronto years. So that's cool. I mean, I'm interested. Uh, you know, hey, listen. Yeah, I if have you been... look at Ant 4, he's wearing his co- costume still, too. So here's the thing is like the the main thing is, is that I'm like, well, there needs to be a cliffhanger. But like the thing is, I've been waiting to f- hear the uh, expanded, like, you know, sort of direction that Eric was going with this whole uh, rich people bringing about the biblical rapture so that they can survive. I, I think it's a great story. I think it's a story of our time. I think it's like, in, you know, there's some class dialogue in there. You know, I think it's awesome stuff. So actually, I mean, I'm super into this. Uh, but like Jim said, I am kind of ready for some of the rehashing to be behind us to where each issue feels fresh. That's mm-hmm. all. That's all. I'm good. So ant number four, enter the dragon. It's the savage dragon ant crossover from a whole different perspective. 
Ant travels to Chicago to recruit Malcolm Dragon for her upcoming battle against the forces of evil. Ant comes with our highest possible recommendation. And there you go. And it's currently got a May 11th release date. So we should be recording that show in like January of next year. It sounds accurate, <laughs> yes. <laughs> no, I'm hyped. I'm excited. What are we going to do about June, guys? That's a big question. What are we going to do about June? Well, in theory, there's, mean? there's a lot coming out in June. There's a lot coming out in June. Because Dragon will be back. There'll be another issue yep, of man. Ant. And, of yep. course, we'll have to review our own comic because we like to self felatiate Ooh, I like that. Yeah, I hope that Super Freaks, we can get some of the participants involved. That would be kind of nice. We'll do something. Definitely won't go un un uh, unaddressed. If we don't, that would be kind of sad and shitty. <laughs> like we don't like bring them on at all. Well, that was a pretty good one. Uh, like what Connor did. Uh, yeah, David Branstetter, good job. Uh, anyway, <laughs> if we have time, we'll talk about it. No, sorry, I ran out of time. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love when people do that. Anyway, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Make sure to ask Raven why he chose every individual line he did. <laughs> so what were you thinking when you drew this? What were you thinking when you drew that? Uh, Rob Liefeld. I need a backstory of every character you drew in your comic. Rob Liefeld, Dilbert, uh... <laughs> Spoilers for the issue. Jim Davis. Yeah, Garfield. There's old Calvin and Hobbes thing. I can't wait till people like get to the magic eye part of the book where they just have to stare until the thing comes. I'm an expert at that. I'm so good at magic eye. <laughs> mm-hmm. There's a whole Mad Magazine part where you like it's like you put it together and it makes a the second gatefold. picture. Yeah. I can't believe you just had that locked and loaded, dude. Good job. Yeah. Now, now there's an experiment for Eric. Every page, the gatefold. gatefold them together to get another page. Did you see Malcolm Gatefolds, saying, "You are a wanker with a giant penis." What me worry? <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. We said it all. I think hey, we've... you know what we forgot? What? Oh my God, we're not what? getting out of this. Craig, tell them where they can send their interesting conversations. Oh, for freak's sake. Savage fincast at gmail.com. We did that before too, where we forget to give out the, the email. But uh, please write us, let us know what you're thinking and how you're liking the comings and goings of Savage Dragon and Ant, and give us uh, some interesting conversation topics. I said comings. <laughs> yeah, you did, Craig. Yeah, you did. <laughs> <laughs>